All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the broadcast here, the PGL Open Bucharest NA Regional Qualifiers. All these qualifiers, man, some, some long names here. Anyways, we got a best of three coming at you. This is the playoffs here. The winner of this will advance on to what will be the final match to determine who's going to be going on to the LAN event, one of the first minors here of the season. We got complexity. We got dire. We got a best of three. Cannot wait. I'm Breaky CPK, joined by a Skim here. Skim, how you doing, man? Hey there, buddy. Looking forward to this one. Uh, we've just seen the Dyer win uh, very convincingly versus Icebark, but more importantly, Complexity in the meantime have also beaten EG in a different qualifier. Yeah. So both teams coming hot uh, off just a fresh win. So, you know, uh, even though some people may think, yeah, Dyer, there are, you know, the favorites, they've already beat Complexity at Kings Cup. But I don't know. Ever since then, complexity has shaped up a lot. Again, they literally just beat Ten EG. So remaining. who knows? Everything's on the table, I think. And we're going to be in for a treat. Five Absolutely. I, I, you know, not that I'm surprised that that result happened by any means. But as you mentioned, both these teams definitely have to be coming into this as a high. Again, the dire overall with what they've been doing. And even now with the victory over Iceberg here about complexity. How about that? Defeating EG in a three-game series, two games to one. Uh, definitely looked good doing it as you would expect, but now here they are. You know, you got to calm the emotions, come back down, and <laughs> all of a sudden you're playing another big match for a completely other tournament. I mean, this has to be such a crazy week for these players and teams, but uh, it's how it is, and you got to you got to kind of go with the punches here. So obviously they had a 20 minute break, but we're back now, ready to go, and we got a draft already to talk about skim. So let's do that. The biggest thing, of course, being complexity going the IO tiny combination. This is something that uh, Limp especially plays a tiny very well. Z Freak plays a great IO. Combine them together. We'll see what happens. Uh, there's a reason we don't see this combo too much nowadays, but at the same time, it still potentially can be really deadly. Oh, for sure. In fact, tiny was actually, I believe, unpicked at TI. Um, I think so. Yeah, I think it's one of the like, very heroes. least. Uh, uh, yeah, at the very least, very low pick rate. And, you know, Io is just a great hero that pairs with a lot of heroes, obviously, these days. But, you know, Tiny is one of those classic combos. And it's also a classic complexity strat, actually. Uh, back when this team, you know, had still Hanskin instead of Mu, they would pull out the Io Tiny quite frequently, actually. And even Williams afterwards, they've, they've tried the Io Tiny a lot of times because... It is just a true and tested tra strategy of theirs. And like you said, Limp, a fantastic Tiny player, and Seafrig, a fantastic IO player. So, again, we're in for a treat. But I do think that the Dyer have two heroes that can deal with this. Lich is an excellent hero to deal with this for the laning stage, but also later in the later in the game, you know, IO Tiny want to be close to one another so that uh, Frost, uh, that, that, that Lich ultimate is going to bounce between them. And the Bat Rider is just a fantastic hero to deal with them. Yeah, sure, you can relocate out of a... Uh, lasso, but what if you jump the IO, right? You nobody's gonna save the IO, and it's just it's such a, it's so important to kill the IO early on. It restricts the tiniest capabilities in the team fight. It le it makes it easier to kite him as well. So I think the Dire are very well equipped to deal with this already. Yeah, no, already a good start, and and I mean at the time, obviously they only got Lich and they respond with the Bat Rider, but. Complexity banning out a Necrophos and now a Life Stealer he here even is there something that maybe pops Radiant into your mind that what the Dyer could possibly still pick here to Dyer even further their you know good Silencer. chances against this combo as we see a Silencer by the way coming out Kyle's been playing a lot of Silencer for Complexity here in these past weeks so popular pick and also great as an anti Bat Rider tool definitely and uh, it it sort of it, it sort of fits their uh, fits their play style uh, in a sense you know Kyle I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to say that he has a like restricted hero pool, but I think Five he has like a, a certain amount of heroes that he ex excels at in every position, right? I think in a support position as well, uh, especially we've seen him really strong on the hero, uh, now really strong on the silencer as well. And he just, I don't know, he just gets the timing of those as well, those big ultimates, those big globals as well. And uh, at least in the past couple of games from Complexity, I think they've always timed it really well, their gangs and fights with the global. And that is something... That not a lot of teams get right. It can backfire a lot if you if you put, use the global too early or maybe hold on for it too long. It can definitely backfire. So having the right timing, having that cohesion, is very important. And as for the dire, I don't know to be honest. I think there are a variety of their heroes, you know, of their own heroes that they could pick that they haven't been banned yet. Uh, we've seen the Spirit Breaker um, from Misery in in a game earlier, which 
definitely still can work here. You know, together with the Bad Rider, there's a lot of gank potential. It, it can be pretty strong against the IO as well, because the IO is pretty squishy. But uh, at the same time, complexity, just the tiny itself, a lot of these roamers can easily be bursted. That is just such a, fun, a fantastic combo. So, yeah. oh, we'll see. Maybe even the Earth Spirit hasn't been banned yet. We haven't seen it earlier because Iceberg banned it twice against the Dire. But it is also one of Misery's heroes that he's excelled at lately. So a couple of options here. Earth, Earth Spirit has the added benefit of having the Silence up against the IO, even against the Silencer as well. Radiant so denying that Global Silence could be Slada. huge. But they're going to go with a Slada, which pretty much fulfills the same role in a sense. I mean, all these Romans, right? They just want to have some sort of initiation, some sort of disruption, some sort of like lane winning potential. You know what would have been interesting to me is Night Stalker wasn't banned here. He definitely could have been a pickup. I could see him going for the Dire. And on top of that, something like a Lycan. You know, you got that synergy right there of the nighttime especially. And being able to heal people up through the tiny bursts as it's starting to happen could have been a solid tool to take advantage of. But they go a different route. They go the Slaughter. Which, which, by the way, you talk about these four position heroes. You mentioned Earth Spirit, Night Stalker. Uh, Sand King comes to mind, but Sauter really hasn't been seeing a lot of action uh, in the four role as of late, in general, as of late. But going here for the Dire, why, what, what, I mean, Tiny already has very little armor in the first place. So maybe about that or what? Phantom yeah, I think, I think they definitely want to deal with him. Sure, he has a little armor in the first place, but he usually builds into... Uh, armor items, right? He's going to get an AC, maybe even a butterfly. Uh, the Agadims is going to provide him with sufficient stats as well. You know, it's just to make sure that they have sufficient physical damage as well, or at least Ten help their physical remaining. damage dealer to deal with the tiny. And uh, Slada has definitely fallen Five off because other heroes just can do more damage and they just can do more around the map, right? If you blink Echo, Radiant that's a lot of burst damage. Death. Uh, very Sounds effective, and Slada usually needs a hero to combo with. We've seen him rise to popularity with the uh, Wind Ranger uh, in the beginning, and you know it, it totally makes sense to find like a combo hero. And in this case, the Dire picked the Sven. It's just a, it's just a very strong match. Like the, the minus armor from Slada on top of the Sven is just very strong, even against the Phantom Lancer as well. It's just a good answer right now. <clears throat> yeah, that cleave going to be able to ideally cleave down the Phantom Lancer illusions uh, amongst five, especially with the God Strength up here. So. Uh, that's perhaps uh, one of several ideas as to why they're, they're liking the idea of a Sven now. And now the final band's to come. So you, you figure complexity, uh, they they probably still need their offlaner, right? I mean, that's really what's left for them. It's not often we see the offlane as a final option, but you'd expect that there. And then a mid option most likely for the Dire. Unless they're planning on doing something like a Batrider mid perhaps. But that would be my guess at least. So what are you Dire banning here for complexity? Back. They ban a Queen of Pain. Could yeah, you nice. definitely want something with a lot of burst damage, uh, AOE burst damage as well. Um, I think it would have been probably between the Queen of Pain and the Puck. I think those two heroes would have been really strong. You want something that can gank with a Bad Rider in the Slada, has a lot of burst damage, can deal with the IO, with the Phantom Lance illusions, and more importantly, deal with tiny IO in the lane as well. Um, they could technically go for Five something, maybe, maybe even melee if they wanted to, but I generally Dying think they probably want a ranged sort of like initiator. Um, so I'm honestly just thinking of the puck right now. And as for complexity, I think this might be a great Timberstar game. It is one of Moo's uh, signature heroes. It can deal very well with a, uh, with a Sven. Yeah, there is a lot of disabled... Uh, and of course, the minus armor from the slot against the Timbersaw. But overall, there's... Remaining. there's You know, he these heroes are pretty much food for a Timbersaw. So this remaining. could potentially be a good game for it. But I don't know. I haven't seen it, I haven't seen it lately. So I'm not sure if, they're, if it's on their radar right now. Pick. Well, Dragonite. it's a go with Dragonite here. It's funny you bring that up because actually the, the third game there with the Complexity EG series, we actually did see a Timbersaw in that game, sure enough. Oh, all uh, right. EG all right. actually ran it on their side, of course, in the losing effort oh, there. Right. But um, So Dragonite's going to be the mid-option for the Dire. They go instead of, you know, a, an objective pusher, but, you know, still brings a you know a fair amount of Five physical damage. Remaining. We're thinking maybe something like the Queen of Pain, more magic presence, but the Dire, they like Dragonite, CC and C paired up. Something we've seen a bit lately. It's still pretty great because the dragon forms, you know, in the dragon form, the DK can deal with Phantom Lancer illusions. In the landing stage, it, it, the DK can trade with Tiny Io as well. It's not easy to burst him down, which would have been a downside of either Puck, Puck or Quap. If they do get picked off, the you know the burst from the Tiny would have uh, probably insta killed them, which doesn't necessarily apply to the DK, especially not you know together with the Lich and the Frost Armor there. So, I think this is a very you know well thought out lineup so far. But I do feel that. 
if they do get like a blank lasso, I feel Tide like there's not Hunter. enough damage. Your heroes. But we'll see. Um, Tide Hunter is a great pickup as well for complexity. It you know adds more to their team fight, provides them with stability, and it's a mech carrier as well. And it's just also a tanky hero that doesn't necessarily get bursted down. Yeah. Yeah, it's either something like that or maybe like a Dark Seer was also coming to mind, speaking of a mech carrier in the off lane, uh, and, and great for team fight presence. But they go the Tide Hunter route instead, which I, I love Tide Hunter personally. I, th I think, uh, you know, that the Ravage is obviously a fun ability to, to cast in itself. But also that this is a beefy, beefy frontliner that's going to be able to sustain some of that physical damage, of course, coming out. From especially this fan and the dragon at even so, um, not again, not a hero we see often, but uh, does make sense here in the hands of Moo Ten coming out for complexity. Remain. So, Phantom Lancer into the Sven, though. I mean, obviously, they picked a Phantom Lancer before remain. Sven, it was just a nice counter pick you could almost call from the, from the dire side. But is that a concern now if you're complexity, the fact that you're running a Phantom Lancer into this, or is this still overall potentially an okay PL game? I, th I still think it's an overall uh, okay PA, uh, PL game. It's There's a little bit of a love and hate relationship between Phantom Lancer and Sven. It depends on the state of the game and the stage of the game. Um, because, yeah, sure, you have Cleave and can deal with those Phantom Lancer illusions, but depending on you know how the difference in terms of net worth and uh, the items, the Phantom Lancer can still kite around the Sven because you know he's likely going to go to Fusil, the Phantom Lancer is going to slow him down. So there's a lot of ways to kite him around and then eventually force him into a scenario where, where you can potentially even kill him and where he can't kill all those illusions on time. So, I don't know, it's it's not necessarily like a straight up like definite counter where Sven is always going to come out on top, so this is still very doable for them. Yeah. I'm going to have to restart my game right here. I'm getting that cursor bug again. <laughs> I can't do that. Right. And I'm on the observer bug again, so I have to restart Dota this 2 as well. This game, man. This game. Alright, I'm sure we're not missing much though as we're getting back in here. To the game. There we go. Let's hit that reconnect. And voila. Let me load him back in. Hopefully no cursor bug. <clears throat> All right. So complexity versus uh, the dire hero. And I know this is this is just a side thing for me. For personally, I mean, it's it's awesome that I get to be doing this in the sense that I have a history with obviously several of these players here, but most noticeably uh, PPD versus Swindle Melons, now known as Kyle. So juicy over here. Look. Yeah. If you're Kyle, you just beat EG. If you get the chance to beat PPD on top, this is the best day of your life. Or the best, <laughs> no, not the best day of your life, but it's probably the best day of the week for, by far. It's a pretty good so feeling. I think, I, I think Kyle will definitely look to try and win this game. As oh, far, yeah. I mean, obviously he's always going to try and win any game, but you know, it's just this, a little bit extra. Extra motivation, exactly. Absolutely. No, I 100% I agree. And, and there could be nothing on the line for this matchup right here, and they would they would want to no doubt be doing all that they exactly. can. Exactly. To exactly. win this series, so I, I love it here, and uh, excited to get it finally kicked off now. As here we go, begins. the bottom bounty rune is going to be stolen, but so is the top one in favor of complexity. So looks like it's going to end up being a two-two split, anyways. As they actually give Z Freak the bounty up here, and he's running down to yeah, this one just for the bottle. Oh. Okay, um, make, making sure they can get the instant bottle, pretty much. Um, and with that, he'll, you know, this is one of the ways to sort of like have control of the mid lane, making sure the Wisp can always uh, get the uh, get the runes. Uh, that way the Tiny can always stay in lane and you don't lose the career, for example, to a misery. Yeah, we oh, saw right, right there where, where they're ascending it. Oh, the toss comes in actually, and now Dragonite going to take some good pressure coming out. CC and see, he's feeling it. This is going to be first blood in favor. Limp getting credit for it. What a chuck to or toss even to start that off from the Tiny. And All right, 40 seconds into the game, Kyle TPs into the mid lane for a kill. <laughs> like, you just don't see that so often. I'm not even sure they needed his damage, but it was actually a really good move for him because yeah. it's two additional intelligence. Get the two intelligence, and it secures the kill, if anything. So obviously a fantastic start. And that was, yeah, Limp actually got credit for that. You see he's running up right here again. Now he has the avalanche combo. And again, you also see a little bit of the buff coming into play here with that toss, where, remember, it used to be 120 for each ability. Yeah, they, they changed that fairly recently where that was just 90 mana at level 1 and increments of 10 at each level here. So y you're a little more likely to be able to use that toss ability earlier on in the game now. Yeah, and we're seeing here right now what I sort of talked about in the last game where it was the OD versus the DK. 
you know, what would cost a, cost a Dyer versus Iceberg. If the DK doesn't have a good time, it's going to really affect his laning stage a lot because he relies that much on the early game to get, or the, like the first two minutes mm -hmm. to get that bottle up. And if he doesn't get that bottle up on time, it's just going to, it's it's sort of like a devil cycle of just not getting farm at all, right? Uh, and he already has the boots queued up as well in case he doesn't get the bottle. I'm sure he'll just get the boots. Like if he dies again, he'll probably just insta by the boots before he dies. Well, we got to talk about these other lanes, too, because mid lane, as entertaining as it is, already first blood happening. Top lane, Jesse the doppelganger. Not only jukes the stun attempt from Slaughter, but it guarantees the kill on a Batrider. Perfect timing on his part. So how about that, though? Phantom Lancer up here with, now we see Silencer obviously making his way back, essentially an aggressive dual lane as they have Tidehunter in the bottom. Sven is rotated. I don't even know who was there first, to be honest, but Sven's at the bottom, of course, as a rotation. But some mind games going on here in the laning phase. Yep, and at the bottom, at the bottom lane, it's just difficult to deal with this Tide Hunter. You can't really zone him out of the lane as a lich because Tide Hunter is just very tanky, and because of the early boots build as well, he isn't really slow, so he can always walk up to the lich as well. So in that sense, yeah, you can deny him creeps, but effectively speaking, he's still getting experience and even last hits. And in that sense, <laughs> effectively, Complexity is winning all three lanes right now. It's, yeah, sure, it's still early, but. Right now, they're winning all three lanes. I mean, according to the CS, they're winning all three lanes. So I think you're definitely not wrong to suggest that right here. Uh, all the top three farmers in the game all belong on their side. I mean, Dragonite now competing somewhat. But, yeah, Moo's doing fantastic down here, getting the level two Kraken shell. So he's like, all right, yeah, I could just tank this damage, eat a tree. I'll be fine. Top lane, Jesse, you know, thought he might have been going right there. But Zai keeping his distance. Middle lane, they're definitely going, though. Avalanche in the toss coming out. There's a tether slow. Trying to get the orbs out. Don't know if it's going to be enough damage. Probably not. Yeah, he just falls back, and he'll be fine using that bottle. But they keep the pressure up. Look at this. Taking off the bottle charges. I love it. Just on point. And, he, again, he has, he has basically a moving fountain with him anyways in the IO, so he's not afraid to use that mana here on the toss. Yeah. Oh, see, see, Is this see. a kill? Just... He's going in again, isn't he? Breathe Fire comes out. Tiny missed the crush on him. He only hit the IO, though, and so CCNC will survive, but to see how balls to the wall he is playing right here. Yeah. Um, good, though, on Misery to come here because he's going to contest the rune. If it does spawn top, they're lucky. Uh, but Lich also bottom lane. And this is how you have to deal with the with the Tiny Wisp mid. You need to have control of the runes. Because the only way they can sustain this lane is by just con constantly harassing the mid laner and having superior regeneration. But if you deny the runes, which... Obviously, there are bounty runes still to pick up, but if you do, if you do deny the runes, you have potential to kill this tiny. And they do. Oh, tiny oh. is in trouble right now. The avalanche did hit Slark initially, or Slaughter even, but it's not enough to save himself. The dragon tail comes out from CCNC, and eventually they do take him out. So that's a two-man rotation of sorts, and ultimately three heroes coming together. And guess what the big factor was too? Obviously, Io not being there, he was back at base doing the regen, getting those bottle charges. So good timing by the dire there. To Perfectly executed. Again, this comes down to, or this comes back to them denying him the the runes, like uh, or that that one four minute rune. He was forced to go back to base. He could have technically gone for the bounty runes, but it wouldn't have been enough uh, for in terms of regeneration for both of them. So just a good timing, and it does give CCNC some space to get back into sort of like farming with the bottle as well. He can do use breathe fire to at least secure last hits. So he's doing fine, and I would say that in a sense this lane has somewhat evened out. But the other lane's definitely still in favor of complexity. Sven here at the bottom lane, working on that Mask of Madness, of course. Don't really expect that to uh, sway too much as far as that typical build. He's going to be picking up a quarter staff here early on for some enhanced farm potential. Lich making his way down here as well, just going to simply harass. But I <laughs> can even see right there, the level 2 Frost Blast. It just tickles Tidehunter. He is as if it didn't even happen there. He's more than fine, so... He's a beefy target, has that Ring of Regen on him. We'll see what he builds that into, but of course, going the Arcane Boots next. Well, the top lane booster. has been abandoned, and instead, Batrider and Slot are going to go for a kill, which I assume is going to go mid? Uh, well, are they going to wrap around bottom? Uh, Again, it's a very tanky title. Oh, they could probably kill him with four heroes, so they should be able to kill him. <laughs> it's, he's not level 6 yet. If he was level 6, I'd say he probably escapes, but just because he isn't yet... He's probably dead. Here we go. Here's the four-man gank on the raid boss. Moo, taking the damage, has a TP. Can he TP now? Uh, he's not feeling comfortable about it. Yeah, they had the crush still, so no way he was getting out. And he will end up dying in the end. So the four-man gank is successful. 
by the dire side. That's one of those cases you go, oh, guys, there's four people ganking me. And then you're like, oh, push up the lanes. That's what he's doing at the top lane. Middle lane, CCNC. He's in trouble again, too. He will die to the orbs. No, the last Ooh. one didn't hit. Oh. And he barely survives. He went in instead of out. Z Freak just out of the angle there. So close. So close and so clutch as well. If they had get that kill, would have been a huge win. But at the same time, it is pretty much a win anyway because they forced CCNC to walk back to base, region up, and then has to TP back. So a lot of time wasted for him. And just after I mentioned that, you know, he was sort of recovering in the lane, which, you know, 30 last hits isn't bad by any means, but it's also not great either. So I don't know. This lane stage, again, it's, it's working into Complexity's favor, especially now with that kill into the bat router. But at the end of the day, I think if you're a team dire, you're not really too focused on winning the lanes anyway. You're probably looking for that mid game. You know, with the bad rider, with these blink rotations. So that is definitely something where they can still easily come back into this game. With the Dragon Knight as well, taking objectives. So as long as they stay focused. Oh, and maybe not give away kills. Oh, PPD in trouble right here. He has a crush coming out from Misery, though. So not only going to stop them, but maybe try to set up a turn. Dragon Knight is running in. Lempy chucks him in and gets the kill, though, onto Lich. He's like, thank you for standing nearby me. I'll use you as a target. To throw <laughs> and down they immediately... Teammate. They immediately ping it, guys. The only way he can toss me there, uh, he can toss you there, is because they have vision. Yep. Um, but that ward already paying off, and ooh, Kyle even instantly finds a D ward as well. <laughs> well uh, D ward a demo for us. Yeah. So that's uh, well played on their part, and you know, even if they end up D warding that, obviously it's already worth it. The kill that you uh, that you got out of it. He has 15 charges on his wand, so he could actually set up a combo here. He finds the, the chance to. They might just be baiting him, yeah. There you go. They're going to go in. Silence are here as well. There goes the silence from the last word. The Arcane's Curse comes up, and that's a kill. Maybe not. Oh, my God. He's going to live. Magic Wand, the bottle charges. CCNC is not going to survive in the end, though. But at what cost now for the Radiant side? In comes Zai. Misery with a crush to finish off Io. And now Kyle. He's going to lead him the other direction. It's Limp. Limp lands a two-man avalanche, though. He has. That's a courier coming, actually. He tosses Misery in the air. And now Kyle with the Arcane's Curse looking to turn on to Misery. Limp, another toss in two more seconds. Here comes Phantom Lancer. The Spirit Lance on a Bat Rider. Slaughter is dead. Bat Rider goes down. And the rotations are pretty solid from Complexity right there. Get a couple of kills. This is some good coordination from Complexity. Yeah, they overextend a little bit in the mid lane, and, you know, they trade the IO, and it sort of looked like they were almost overextending again, but I don't know, they just made it work. And in the meantime, Moose is silently farming. Look, look at him. He's pushing up the top lane, applying pressure, He's even zoning out the Lich. They're just making... Oh. Oh. He's swimming, man. Z-Freak, he's going to tether away to his brother right here. And he will be fine. Limp. His brother's not nearby. He's at the bottom lane pushing up the tower right there. Global Silence, though, going to try to prevent Lim from getting killed. Z-Freak, he does have another tether up. Going to block a little bit. They turn for the kill and slaughter, though. Avalanche comes out. He could not get the toss off, though. Finally gets the toss off. And Chuck spent into him. God strength activated. Chessy is rotating over, though. Tiny is going to fall, but now CCNC. He needs to be careful. Doppelganger 4. Jesse, he wants the bat rider, though. He's a much squishier target. Flame break pushback. It did not get the real one. It pushed the illusion over the edge. The armor is applied, though. And that is going to be enough room for Zai to escape here. So good response. Again, Mu, you mentioned he's farming that top lane, pushing it in all the way to the secondary tower. I got to say, though, they could probably start using this Tidehunter in upcoming fights. Definitely. And I'm not, I didn't, I didn't quite check it, but I wonder why he didn't TP, because they were actually fighting very close to the shrine. Could have maybe even turned around the fight with the, with the Ravage, but yeah, never mind. He hasn't skilled it yet. Yeah, notice that. Uh, which, again, is, it's not even that bad. I mean, that's, this is definitely a viable skill, but it has been done before. And, you know, the way he's playing, it makes sense to not skill the Ravage. But if he had it there, that's probably a turnaround. Maybe get even two kills onto the enemy carries. But Well, no, he, he's sitting happens. on a point, right? Because, yeah, he only has seven points. Yeah, he's actually sitting on a point right now. There you go. I, I, I think he was, he was probably deciding whether or not they... I mean, I think in the team comms, they probably decide, all right, don't TP. Just keep on applying pressure. We can we can manage here, and uh, maybe they overextend a little bit because it almost looked like a good fight, right? If, if Zefric doesn't get stunned there, they probably heal both him and the tiny up, and, and they maybe turn it around without tight under. So yeah, just small nuances at this point. Batrider running in bottom lane. Kyle's in a lot of trouble. Lasso? He doesn't have lasso actually. He doesn't have Don't wand charges. So tower. relocate coming in. Zai, you're overstepping your boundaries, good sir. Limp. Avalanche is just out of range. A toss on his eye, but they're not going to be able to follow him up. So good job by Sven, running away in time. He has that mask of madness finished, of course. Tiny blink now. 
he just picked up the blink and they haven't I don't think they've seen it yet. So okay. this could def this could potentially work into a kill. Well they did just use relocate, so that's the unfortunate thing, but again having the blink. Definitely still a, a way to get a kill. Look at the stack, by the way. That's somewhat a triple stack here for Sven. Bycat cleaning that up, and as you'd expect with the Sven on the other side. Support's doing a good job of making sure that's ready to go. So his farm, pretty good right now. Yeah, and they have to be careful, though, because on the Radiant side, they also have a stack right now. They have to be careful to not give that to the Sven. Uh, obviously, you know, this stack is meant for this Tiny once he has an oh, Agnes. Yeah. Or potentially together farming it with the Tide Hunter early on. But if they give this to the Sven, that's what, like 300 gold, 400 gold maybe? So, mm -hmm. yeah, just make sure to protect that stack at all costs. What what do you think Limp does get next? You mentioned the Yags. Is it that right away? Or maybe the Echo Saber at least first and then into it? Or Shadow Blady? I mean, what, what directions would you like to see? It depends how they want to run this game. Just because they have Phantom Lancer, he might actually go into something like the Shadow Blade or the Echo Saber. But there's a couple of builds. He could even go drums first still as well. I think that could be an excellent item choice. Uh, but definitely something in that regard. I don't think you want to go aggro straight up. The lane. Have the attack speed. Ravage is ready. Expected to come out perhaps. Jane Frost, the global science is used. Frost bouncing around. It's eventually going to stop though. Ravage, if, you, if they need this kill for it now, they're not going to use it. The toss is more than enough damage. In the back lines though, Batwatter is here. Moo is charging in. Sven, he's going to get caught. The gush comes out on him actually. Avalanche on top of that. He's just holding on the Ravage. They don't need it. They're able to catch up to them. Double kill coming out for Lip now. And Zion, that Batrider, is just going to fire fly away. Meanwhile, back to the middle lane. Slaughter, he may have got a little bit too curious. Limp, blinking seven more seconds. Not going to go for it, though. Not worth it. So he holds on to the Ravage, but again, they didn't actually need it in the end, and now he still has it for another fight coming up. Yeah, it's actually really smart. Like, the longer you don't use the Ravage, the it's it's one of those silly things, right? The, the fear of the Ravage is bigger than the Ravage itself. You know, It's one of those things that... That's a nice solo kill for Chessie. that? That was down here, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's something, you know, I think Puppy was it or Malik said it about Enigma, or, you know, the threat of the black hole is bigger than the black hole itself in some cases. And it's the same the same theory applies here. Because they haven't used Ravage yet, it gives Dyra the, you know, it, it sort of like makes them scared of the Ravage because they can't take take team fights against this because the Ravage is still going to be there, right? Mm -hmm. If the Ravage wasn't there, they could maybe smoke gang and try to force a fight. Oh, nice Dragon Tail stun, but I don't think it's going to matter in the long run. And CCNC is going to be picked off here. They're just moving as a team now. This this feels like what we were casting the series before this of the Dire versus Iceberg, and the Dire in that game too, especially. They just started moving, and it was just go go go. And now you got Complexity doing that to the Dire here. And again, with Complexity's lineup, it makes a lot of sense, especially with the IO Tiny combination. But you can just tell when a team is in a groove. And right now, Complexity definitely feeling that groove. Again, coming off the high of the victory over EG, I'm sure. And now feeling good in game number one here. Not not saying it's out of control by any means, but they have a 5,000 lead at 14 and a half minutes. And this Tiny currently has a Manta style queued up. Now, that is not the direction I would have expected him to go oh, in. Is there a oh. blink lasso? He has Ravage. Does he maybe use it here to try to run? No. God, he's so tanky. This is five freaking heroes. Takes him like 10 seconds to kill him. You know, I think if you if you're Team Dire, you probably don't really feel that pressure just yet. Um, yeah, sure, you can't really take any fights, but I think the way you're farming and you know the way your cores are farmed isn't actually that bad. Yeah, they're behind 5k, but I mean they're also behind three towers, so a lot of that net worth advantage is a little bit deceptive. So, quite frankly yeah. speaking, Dire is actually doing pretty well, all things considered. The Sven is pretty farmed. The, we just saw the blink on the on the Bat Rider and. Uh, Misery also has a blink now. Mm -hmm. Like, where does he get this farm on a slaughter? They haven't taken a single tower, so that's not that's not where the money is coming from. Th this is but the timing. Is, yeah, this is the timing for them. They're gonna have to find a lot of kills, and they probably will. If they're gonna recover in this game right now in the early phase, this is definitely their timing, and it's gonna start right here, Jesse. Oh, they get the jump first. Avalanche comes out the global science as well, and now Dragonite on the run. Bat Rider, he still no, he doesn't have the lasso actually. Doppelganger forward from Jesse, splitting up Pycat. He does not have a blink himself on Sven, so. He cannot necessarily just get in there. Silencer's going to be stunned, but they just keep on running. They did not want to run into what would be a Ravage. Dyer's and again, this Tiny, who, by the way, does have the Yasha now picked up. So he is going to prioritize the uh, the Manta style. 
as I was just mentioning right here. Well, why do you think the Manta Style? It's not an item we see all too often on Tony. Yeah, we don't see it, but it does provide him with a lot of necessary stats. You know, it makes him a little bit tankier. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, he doesn't necessarily have a lot of armor early on, but, you know, with agility, it does give him a little bit of armor attack speed. Um, he can dispel the Slada ultimate with his Manta Style, I believe. So, you know, yeah. I don't know. There's, there's definitely something there. Um, and just in general, it just makes him tankier. Yeah, so a very defensive item, really, is what it comes down to. But you know what? With the way they're getting kills already, it's kind of makes sense with that logic. You can see what uh, Limp is thinking right here. 1,100 gold now saved up. So that Manta style is getting very close to, uh, to in fact, being finished. Phantom Lancer, definitely another hero that could also go in Manta style. Currently has his Diffusal finish, though. And, of course, that's big. Bottom lane, Kyle. Don't know if he's living through this one. No TP's coming in. Just simply going to accept death. It, it takes a little bit, but eventually... Do take him out. So again, the blink initiation doing a work there. Titaner is bottom, and actually he's just about level 12 here. In fact, he will hit it. So second point into Ravage now makes it that much stronger when it comes to actually the, using it. The strength of Complexity's lineup is that they don't even need to have everybody present to defend a tower. Titan walks in, four heroes disperse because yeah. they know Dyer's they cannot tower. burst the Titan Hunter in time before they blink, uh, before the relocate comes in. So odds are he is going to get his Ravage out if they do jump him. And that basically means they can take that fight. So they already just disperse. Like that wouldn't happen with any other hero after Dyer's they, after, especially after they killed the Silence attack. already, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a really well rounded draft and the well rounded playstyle from Complexity. and. Dyer are responding correctly. They're just, you know, making the most out of it, farming with pretty much any hero they can. But at the same time, they don't don't get objectives just now, even though they got a kill in front of the tier one tower. Uh, you see Io and Tiny looking for a kill at the top lane. Unable to find anything though, so Limp doesn't want to waste time. He goes back to his own jungle and continues to pick up farm there. As as expected, you do see Chessie queuing up that Manta style now. And it's gonna farm up the the Dyer jungle even. Now Skim, you mentioned that stack earlier on the Radiant side, by the way. It was just oh. taken by Sven right there. Yep. So that's a nice um, makeup. To be fair, Complexity didn't invest too Dyer's much into the stack. I think they stacked it attack. twice. Um, so in that sense, it wasn't that big of a stack, and you know they weren't necessarily reliant on it. Otherwise, they probably would have taken it already. But it's just a bit careless. You just don't really want to give that to Sven, and the stack has been sitting around there for, what, three, four minutes now? So, I don't know, it just feels a bit weird, but at the same time, it doesn't really hurt them too much, either. Mm -hmm. Well, top tower goes down, 19 minutes into the game. Complexity keeping the objectives up, so that Manta style is going to be finished. Okay, not your everyday item on a, uh, on a on this hero, but there are some things that it's going to be nice for removing and allowing Limp to feel a little more confident as he goes into these fights. And now he does have the axe queued up as well. So there's our answer as far as when he was going to be picking that up here. Arcane Boots finished on Tiny, not Tiny, uh, Io in the meantime. He basically is, he's like kind of half of Tiny. <laughs> Stays with him the whole time anyways. And I, I, just love how, I just love how Complexity is just farming the Dire jungle though too. It's, you could just tell how scared the Dire is here. They're just giving up their own jungle even. Yeah, the vision, the, it doesn't really, it's, it's nice aggressive vision, but they can't really make use of it just yet. Um, they would have to smoke ink, really. Like, they have two wards that perfectly capture the, 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 the Radiant Jungle, but because they don't really see anybody, they can't really go there either. That's a tough uh, tough task here for the Dire Squad. Limp cleans up an Ancients, and... I mean, Roshan's a course up. Is, is that something that Complexity should be thinking about coming up here? Because, again, they, they've been spending a lot of time on hold that thought because middle lane. We're going to see initiation. Slaughter goes into the back lane. Didn't really hit anybody, though, I believe. And he just jumps into insta-death right there. And they also get Batrider on top of that. The song comes out from my own. Guess where he's porting? Over here. Now that Ravage, again, ready to go, but probably won't need it. Gush used on his fan. He's just, he's just swimming on him now, literally swimming on top of him. Avalanche. Coming out after the kill anyways. Double kill for Jesse. And now it's going to be a bottom tower push on top of that. I, Moo has literally yet to use his Ravage. Yet you know what? They don't need it. They really don't. And that's the great thing about how Complexity is moving and has been playing this game thus far. Um, against a team like, you know, like the like the Dyers, you know, with the Bad Rider, with the, with the Slada, even with the DK, you would think that they would find openings to, to, to find, like, ganks with their blinks, right? But... How many kills have they actually got with their bling? I'm pretty sure only one. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I don't know. I think they're just playing very patiently. They're making sure that they don't get caught out, both on the supports as well as the course. 
I mean, not that move really has to cure because, let's be honest, he's so tanky Dyer's that they would have to commit literally four attack. or five heroes to actually kill him. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I think they're just playing very well around the map and they have great wards. They know that Misery is here. <laughs> they saw him sneak up here. The Avalanche didn't even hit, but they're still going to, well, maybe not get the skill. Chain Frost comes out. It bounces back a couple of times, but a great spread ultimately by Complexity. Minimal bounces. Z-Freak does get credit for the kill on Misery. I believe that was an earned kill. No. Oh. Feeling good there. Kyle, they're going to jump onto him, though, but Tiny, he's ready to go back in with the combo. Not going to go into that case, though. Io, he wants to save his Io teammate, though. Z-Freak, tennis up with Limp. Here comes the Ravage. Moves like, remember this ability, bitches. Pycat, he's melting away. It's Phantom Lancer sitting on top of him, and eventually will go down. CCC in the yellow dragon form. It's not going to be tanky enough. Limp eventually pounds him down with the assistance of Chessy. In fact, Chessy gets the triple kill. And Kyle, you can tell he's pumped up when he's spamming emotes like that. This is just great execution from Complexity, and yeah, the yeah. Dire reinitiated that fight, but at the same time, they jumped the Silencer, who already uses spells, so, you know, the, the surprise, uh, the element of surprise was used on the Silencer instead of maybe, you know, the, the Tiny. Dyer's so, I don't know, it was it was a bit under attack. scrambled in a sense, and it was just great timing from Mu as well, and Chessy as well, to move in, sort of last minute, uh, making it a little bit difficult for Dire to coordinate on the two of them, and... Great team fight. Could have been even worse for the Dyer, to be honest. Um, the Ravage just did, missed the Bad Rider, I believe, so mm -hmm. that was very lucky. What's the game plan here for the Dyer now? You're now down 11,000 net worth at this point, 22 and a half, 23 minutes into the game. I mean, Sven's doing all right here, but he is behind in farm. When you look at the two cores on the other side, he has a BKB queued up. Is, is that the answer? I mean, is that a they get that, then maybe things can turn, or do they need more? It's definitely going to make it a lot easier because the Sven is not going to get kited as much. But I think they need to find smoke gangs first be before they can really go for this uh, or before they can rely on the BKB to carry them. Because right now, the way they're playing or the way they've been playing so far has been sort of patient and maybe a little bit scared because they don't really have the vision to back up whatever their game plan is. Uh, but I think they just need to smoke up and try and find a kill because half of their heroes depend on these gangs. Radiant's they're not necessarily great team fight heroes. Look at Slaughter. He's trying to find Radiant somebody. Meanwhile, the top tier three is being pressured now, and Batrider comes back in, but that might be it for the cost of his life here. In fact, it absolutely is. Limp is now on a dominating streak, and actually he gets relocated out to the bottom lane, and now Chessies has to survive, but back to the bottom lane. Toss used on a Misery right here. No Ravage just yet for Tidehunter, so Misery keeping his distance. Gush up in a second, though. There we go. He missed the crush on a Tidehunter. Did hit Limp. I don't think Misery is ultimately escaping though. I mean, he does have the sprint pretty damn fast with it. Activated pops a shrine as well. Back at the top lane, meanwhile, Z Freak and Chessie both go down while this getaway is happening from Slaughter. So that actually works out very well for Misery. Look at that bounty, by the way, for CC and C. 913 gold as he stops an eight kill streak, the first death of the game for Phantom Lancer. Yeah, very strong play from uh, Misery here. I mean, first of all, denying that kill into the Sven by immediately jumping them and counter-initiating with his crush, and then even escaping on top of it as well. Um, wasted a lot of time on Complexity's part. They potentially neglected the the fact that you know there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of TPs to the top lane, and they were waiting for the uh, Wisp and the Phantom Lancer as well. So, a bit sloppy from Complexity, and this is definitely the much needed break that Complex uh, that Dire needed. This. You know what takes a good phantom lancer off the map for a minute basically gives them some time to farm and potentially even find another kill if they want to so mm -hmm. yeah, this is pretty good for them they just need to be a bit more patient but at the same time they also need to find more kills like this like they need to find more pickoffs like this even if it is on the support as long as they can make sure that complexity doesn't five man i think they're in a good position Oh, well, again, they definitely have strong late game, I mean, with the with the Sven here. And on the other side, to be fair, Complexity also does Radiant's have pretty strong late game. So they can't necessarily play the game of let, let's just tank this out forever. But, yeah, finding their openings, being patient. And you could, you could definitely tell they, they've kind of Radiant's backed off as far as committing themselves. Again, they were giving up their jungle earlier, as we mentioned. CCNC does have his BKB now finished himself. And we talked about Sven working on his own. In fact, he's, he's already got the Mithril Hammer, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so, yeah, he actually has in his inventory there. So, there you go. The Ogre Club and the recipe are what's left. Meanwhile, Roshan was wondering when we we're going to see this happen in this game. And sure enough, it's well, 25 and a half minutes in. So Yeah, this is go. a bit worrying now for Dire in a sense where, you know, Limp does have the Agonims now. So, he can push a lot faster now. Like, this is going to change the pace of the game a little bit just because he has that item now as well. And once, you know, once a couple of more items drain in, 
they would I think complexity is gonna soon look towards the fight, look towards a push. They do have the Aegis after all, and they need to make something out of it. So you know, I think the next two, three, four minutes are gonna be very telling and if you're dire, you probably want to, you know, trade as efficiently as possible, either in objectives or try and find a pickoff. But as I say that, Complexity is moving as five. They just don't want to give them those pickups. No, they don't want to give them the opening. And Axe Tiny, it is ridiculous for beating down towers. Now, again, they do have the Lich. Nine armor on the building. It is maxed out here, so it's not going to drop as fast as it maybe usually does. He also doesn't have that Echo Saber that we see a fair amount of times on Tiny, so... Again, th this building is surviving quite a bit, but they, they are going to get the tier 3 at this rate. They ha they're holding on to the Ravage, of course, so the last thing you want to do is hear the Dyrus just commit to a big fight, only to get huge Ravage on and completely turn. So the top tier 3 will go down. The Rax, what about that now? Titan, they're going to jump on him. Is that really the best choice? Olympi chucks in the God Strength BKB span. The Ravage goes up. Pi Ken, he's looking for the target. He's finding all the illusions. He can't find the real one, though. And now he's dying himself. He gets a couple of hits on the real Phantom Lancer. Not going to be enough. The Global Science on top of that chain. Frost is going to bounce around, do a fair amount of damage as well as slow them down. Look at the spread, though, from Complexity. In the mid fight, they do a pretty good job of it, but Phantom Lancer's getting low. But Moo comes in to save that day right here. Guardian Crease in five more seconds. They're getting kills, though. They don't even need to save Chessie. He's fine. Just goes back to the racks and going to beat it down. There's a couple of buybacks, though, as Limp will take out Misery and force him to buy back for half. The Flame Break pushback. They do not get the racks, but they don't get any hero kills on the side of the Dire, and they're not even done. Yeah, they have, they have Guardian Greaves, so they're all pretty much, I mean, Chessie, look, he's full HP again. Wisp, <laughs> Guardian Greaves, oh, this is fantastic. So they just take racks, and I, I, I'm... I'm I don't think they're going to go for another set of racks. That would be too greedy, you know, to just take try and take the game a little bit slower. Yeah. Uh, just let let the dire sit in this in this in this loss basically, right? Soak it in. Soak yeah. it in. Yeah, no, this this is a very tough spot to be in now for for the dire right here. Sven is again has the BKB used it right there and it, they they still did a pretty good job of kiting him around. That so it goes back to that item. Yes, it's great and he he needed it, but at the same time you can still play around it. You can still try to kite him with, with, with set abilities as Phantom Lancer right there using the doppelganger to get away. And obviously Sven trying to figure out which one's the real one in the midst of that chaotic fight. So it's uh, it's something that's a spectator you kind of have to remind yourself too. For him, he doesn't necessarily see which one's the real one. He kind of just has to do educated guesses there. So bottom lane. Oh, well, they found the real one. Gets absolutely destroyed. Rambling on here. This is This is, you know... I mean, I think we've pretty much seen why I said that the Sven Phantomancer yeah. relationship isn't as clear cut. Because in the top fight, Phantomancer kites him around like crazy, and he cannot kill any of the illusions, or he can only kill the illusions, can't really kill the, for, the real one. But the bottom lane, now we see why the Sven is so strong as the Phantomancer. As long as you catch him out, you can just wipe him and his illusions in an instant. So it, it really goes both ways, and it really depends on, you know, who finds the better initiation. So this is definitely something that, you know, complexity going forward, they really need to rely on Limp and on Mood to find those right initiations to, to buy Chessy that space to deal as much damage as he can. Moo checking out the bottom lane. And he, he, he feels pretty comfortable. He even knew, knew that they were down here, but if they jump in, reactions could come in, especially with the relocate. And for how long it takes to kill him, it's just not worth it. So he feels safe for good reason. And we'll get them to fall back. The radiant, they do scan out several people in the area. Kyle, like how he's just standing in the face of slaughter, says, come at me. <laughs> uh, that's because he has his uh, his brother and limp behind him. So looking a little tougher than maybe he really was in that case. But Silencer does have a helm of the Dominator, by the way. And I, I know I, I think I mentioned this in the previous series, too, that the complexity has also been doing this a lot lately. Um, this is an item that Kyle... Definitely showing that he appreciates, and again, it kind of fits that mentality of the team fights and doing the objectives Dyer's that this uh, team shot. seems to have, and him as a captain, that's always been his mentality. Yeah, for sure. It, it, it's such shot. a strong pushing it's item, fun. not only because of the aura, but also because of the creeps that you can dominate. They add a lot of value. You know, we've, we've seen the what the Wild Wing Ripper in the last in the last series. Now we see the Alpha Wolf. There's just so much damage or so much bonus added just from these creeps, and they're difficult to bring down as well. You can't just oh yeah, I'm just gonna burst him. No, that's, that's I'm not gonna say it's possible, but it's very difficult. 
And, well, with the Aegis complexity, they're going to push again. Look at that positioning from Moo, by the way. Again, Ravage, of course, is ready to go in the back lens. Lasso, they caught Silas with no global sense. They want to they want to blow him up. BKB goes up the Goss Ring. Can they blow him up every time? The stun on top of them. The Glimmer Cape's not going to save him, but the teammates are dying around him. CCNC will fall. They did pick up Phantom Lancer in the midst of that cleave. They'll limp. Now he's deciding to go for the Mailer Rex. He says, get off me, bro. I want to kill your buildings. Moo, he's, of course, still fine to go. Full life. Here comes Io, by the way. Bought back, relocates in even, and helps to secure the kill. Honest fan, a triple kill for a limp, and GG well played is called. Just like that, it feels like. Complexity is going to take game number one here in this best of three. Absolutely dominating performance. Complexity winning pretty much all three lanes, and then from going there, just not giving Dyer any opportunities, any openings. You know, with a team like what? Sven, uh, Slada, Bad Rider, you'd assume that Team Dyer would be able to, you know, find a very dominating uh, mid game where they can kill pretty much anybody on the complexity side. But not only were they tanky, you know, Moo, Tiny, but they were also just so grouped up together that they never gave them an opening. And mm -hmm. I, I think complexity played this, I wouldn't say it perfectly. I think they, you know, there were all, a few hiccups here and there, but I think as close to as perfect as they could have, really. Yeah, no, it's uh, of course uh, no one's going to really play perfect, perfect by any right. means, but definitely a great game from Complexity and uh, making a statement there. I feel like it's safe to say in that first game against the Dyer. So going to be an interesting draft here. Now going into game number two, I know obviously you got both PPD and Kyle here in this one. Definitely uh, great minds when it comes to the draft. So we'll see how PPD and crew over there reacts to uh, what happened in that first game, but. Do you, do you ban Z Freaks tiny, or IO here? Is that is that one that maybe you're thinking about if you're the dire you think? I don't think so. It's just uh, maybe, but I just don't really think so. But that's a great part. Of, uh, that's a great part about picking this combo this early, right? If you do win, you probably put that thought into the opponent's head that you know maybe it's worth banning that IO. But at the same time, like if you look at the past games that we've seen from Complexity, not only today but even in the past couple of days mm -hmm. and weeks. They haven't even prioritized that IO that much, so in a sense, they don't really rely on the IO to you know make their strats work. They don't rely on the IO Tiny to make their strats work. In fact, it's only I'm not going to even call it a cheese strat, but it's just one of their many strats they do, that they do have. So in that sense, it's just I don't know. I think it's a great opener in a best of three, and yeah, maybe they will ban that IO, but that would have, if if they do that, that's just a really great move from Kalexi and Kyle in general from in like drafting in the best of three. Well, we'll see, guys. This is the semifinals here of the NA qualifiers for PGL. Land spot on the line. Ultimately, we got the winner of this. Moving on to what would be the finals here of these qualifiers. Again, for the North American region. Right now, it's a one nothing lead for Complexity. We'll see if the Dyer has what it takes to force a third game or if Complexity can ride the wave of momentum that they're no doubt feeling right now and go with 2-0. Stay tuned, guys. I'm Breaking CPK, joined by a skim here. More coverage coming up next.